Hey guys, today on the channel we're going to be reviewing and testing out the Scythe Grand Karma Cross 3, which is a super unique looking cooler. I mean, just, just look at this thing. I really want to see if this design actually helps it at all or if it's really just a look thing. So let's first get to actually going over the specs and everything of this cooler and taking a look at it and then we'll uh, do some tests and stuff like that and see how it performs. So I'm gonna call the Grand Comma Cross 3 just the Grand Comma because Grand Comma Cross 3 CPU cooler is a long name. So this is from here on out in this video, the Grand Comma. So if you're looking at the specs and everything of this, this is a big cooler. It comes off the motherboard 171 millimeters, so that's what clearance you need in the case you're using. And it's 147 millimeters by 140 millimeters. It weighs 790 grams, which definitely isn't the heaviest cooler I've ever felt, but it, it definitely is a heavier, it is on the heavier scale for sure. It comes with a pretty beefy 140 millimeter PWN fan, which can ramp up to about 1300 RPM which definitely isn't the fastest fan, but the reason this is a huge benefit on this cooler is because it actually keeps the, the sound way down. This cooler only ramps up to about 30 decibels, which is about normal human talking volume. I mean, if you can hear here, this is what it sounds like at idle. So here is, this is it at idle, how it sounds. Okay, and this is how it sounds under load. And even though this fan doesn't ramp up a super to a super high RPM or anything like that, it actually still has a lot of static pressure and it has quite a bit of airflow coming through it. And as far as you can see, you'll see in just a second from the testing I did, it definitely does not hurt this thing whatsoever to have a slower moving fan. It definitely is just a huge benefit in my opinion. In the Grain Come Across 2, there were still eight heat pipes like there are on this model, but those eight heat pipes were actually thinner than they are now. They've upgraded them from six millimeters on the Cross 2 to eight millimeters now on this one. Okay, so we know it looks cool, but let's actually see how it performs. So I already put it on here with some thermal paste and everything. I did not use the thermal paste that came with it, if you guys were wondering, just because it comes in one of those little baggy things and it just wasn't really that good of thermal paste. So I used some of the Noctua thermal paste that I had on hand, which is a decent thermal paste. So let me go ahead and turn this on and let's see how this thing actually performs. So first thing we're going to run is Ida64 Extreme. We're going to run it for 10 minutes and see how after this thing's been running for 10 minutes, how this thing actually performs. So let me get that running. Okay, so it's ran for 10 minutes. So let's see how it did. Stop it and look at the statistics. So it looks like the CPU package hit a maximum of 62 degrees a minimum of 27 degrees and it looks like across all the cores the average was about 76 77 degrees celsius with a max core which was core number four hitting a maximum temperature of 79 degrees celsius which isn't bad at all there's definitely some room for some overclocking i would say there so let's um, run one more test here and see how it performs in a gaming scenario running Heaven Benchmark. Okay, we got everything maxed at 1080. So let's run it. Okay, so looks like in Heaven Benchmark we hit an FPS of 111, 
which is right on par with every other time I've pretty much tested the GTX 1060. And let's see, temperature wise, looks like we're right around 75 degrees Celsius, so about right on par with what we had during the Ida 64 testing as well. So not bad. The best thing I've seen about this cooler when it comes to the design is definitely how it doesn't affect RAM whatsoever. No matter what kind of build you're putting this in, because it has this kind of X design, there's no way it's ever going to interfere with, interfere with RAM unless somehow you have the tallest RAM sticks in the entire world. So that is a huge benefit because a lot of times in air coolers you have to pay attention to RAM clearances because a lot of times they do get in the way of the RAM. But this is definitely a unique design that keeps that as a non-issue really. But the thing that it does come into effect then is if this can fit in your case. Obviously in a case like this where it's very, very wide and really open air, you don't have that kind of problem. But I'm sure in some cases, especially more traditional cases, you might not be able to fit this in there. So definitely pay attention to that 171 millimeter height because you need to make sure it fits in your case. After testing this cooler out and taking a look at it, I'm extremely impressed. I really like this design they have going and it performed quite well. Plus, it's really not an expensive cooler. I think it's ranging around like $45 at the low to 60 at the high, just depending on where you're buying it from. And I'll definitely have links down below if you guys want to pick this up for whatever the cheapest price is at the moment. So I hope you guys liked this review of the Grand Comma Cross 3. Man, that is a mouthful. <laughs> but again, I hope you guys liked it and I'll definitely see you in the next video. This is Zach with Next Tech News. See ya!